Hey everyone, I'm Arbazir and welcome back to Hearts of Aron 4 as Belgium and the Netherlands with Kelvin. Hello! Where we watch factories build and do other exciting things. Hey, 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 I'm not just building factories, I'm tearing down factories. Ooh. Yeah, I'm taking down those damn dockyards. Nobody liked them anyway. Yeah, who needs dockyards? Pretty and the much. Navy. Navy is overrated, <laughs> clearly. Yeah. Alright, so... Today, some exciting things should be happening, as Japan is actually doing war with China. So we might actually get a world tension high enough to change a law or two. Yep. Hey, Marbazu. Yeah? You know what Hertz Myron has taught me? What's that? I hate democracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, democracy is actually terrible in Hearts of Iron. It's so bad. It's legitimately the worst possible strategy. Uh, it, it is pretty bad, yeah. Uh. That said, uh, we are at least managing to scrape by and build factories, despite uh, the Axis surprisingly effective evil plan of just not generating world tension. Yep. How dare they? Yeah. Like, it's still going down, so... Thank God. That said, Republican Spain's making a comeback. Looks like they might uh, vanquish the Nationalists. Yeah, I think they would win. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's a good thing. It means France won't suddenly get three-wayed. That will be the first time I'll see Republican Spain win. That'll be like the 18th time I've seen <laughs> that one. It seems it's just nationally Spain winning in my games and Republican Spain winning in yours. Yeah. And because I'm the host of this game, of course Republican Spain wins. Obviously. If you were hosting, I bet Nationalist Spain would have won. Yeah, probably. That wouldn't <laughs> surprise me too much. Yeah. That said, so, I'm actually starting to transition over to some military factories soon. No time. You yep, I'm building on one more effort. civilian and that will be enough. Yeah, Don't have I enough mean, space to build much more. Yeah. How much space do I currently actually have in the colonies? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. I can still six, seven more factories in uh, Malaysia. So I'll, right. have, I'll have 21 civilian factories total. That should be enough. Yeah, I'm currently operating on... Uh, I own 21 and I get seven from trade. All right. Nice. You get seven from trade? Nerf. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. buying your rubber or what? Rubber and oil, yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm supplying Soviet Union and Republican Spain, so I'm supplying the communists with rubber. Mm -hmm. And I'm supplying, uh, well, perhaps the fascists with oil. Shh. Don't uh, talk about my shady I'm trade deals. I'm exporting some steel. Mm. Yeah, you're, uh, you're giving a fair bit out there. Having said that, I'll need steel for myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of it. Which means you're going to have to import steel. Yeah, ah, pretty much. Ah, ah, ah. Economics. Because you can't stop an export. That would make too much sense. Yeah. Especially when preparing for war. Yeah. Well, you can. You can always close your economy. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, it's you democratic. can't. Exactly. <laughs> we hate <Okay>. democracy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh. All right. But yeah, I've actually managed to more or less fill up Europe uh, with factories at this point. So that said, uh, concentrate industry two might come to my rescue on that and let me get some extra factories out there. Definitely gonna need them. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm halfway writing off my colonies because mine are rather exposed to Japan. You know? Oh, yeah, you are. That's true. Yeah. So, I, I'm, I'm pretty much just sort of, like, writing off my colonies. I, I've never really seen... I've, okay, I shouldn't say that. I've seen Japan once before successfully invade uh, the Netherlands. Can colonies. you really somehow defend your colonies if someone seriously attacks them? No. Exactly. No. Like, I'm per I I've got my fleet out there to hopefully intercept any transports that they might try with, but beyond that... So, like if, if, you play, if you would be playing Japan yourself, invading the Dutch colonies would be a good idea. Oh god, yeah. 
Uh, you want to invade Malaysia, the Dutch colonies, all that region to seize the Allied rubber supply. Yeah. You do that, and then the RAF, the USAF are all cooked. France pursues nuclear technology. Not going to help them. You know what counters nukes? Yeah, what's that? Tanks. <laughs> just, just a casual observation. Well, beating someone up before he can build nukes is a pretty good counter, I would say. Yeah, exactly. The old Blitzkrieg. Yeah. Hmm. Good. Yeah, I've got. A, I've still got a lot of tech I need to research. I need to get friggin' level two artillery going before. Uh, yeah, same. Yeah. I'm not even researching level two artillery yet. I just started level one. Well, actually, no. Correction. I'm finishing level one. I'm about to get to interwar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Begin researching interwar artillery. I'm ho I'm hoping to uh, have an equipment effort for that. Doubt it though. We'll see. And I definitely want to try and get uh, infantry equipment too as well. I, I generally hate trying having uh, level one equipment when uh, the war breaks out. Yeah. Like if you just look at the stat differences on the stuff. It's. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw. It's a huge yeah. difference. Yeah. So, like, the difference on that's just enough to definitely make it worthwhile. If you're behind on that, I feel like you're kind of screwed. That said. All right. So, world tensions, for the first time ever, are finally high enough for us to get uh, partial mobilization. You know, out of all the provinces we have on the border with Germany, mine is the most exposed. It yep. It's the only it's one that can be attacked. Four locations. Yeah, exactly. You'll have to keep the guys in the north busy. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I, I can do that. Don't worry. I'll, I'll have no problem beating up the Germans. I, I have the foolproof uh, slaughter build that I always use. <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, I'm still the other day. Basically. I, I, I managed to get a new high score. I killed 8 yeah. million Soviets and Chinese combined forces. Damn. Uh, losing only 200,000 soldiers. Okay, so what's the build then? Uh, three rows of artillery, two rows of infantry. Okay. Yeah. As it turns out, you just kind of get to the point where you slaughter them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of silly. Yeah, artillery is a little bit too strong right now. Yeah, Paradox needs to nerf that. Yep, I mean, I, I would be very surprised if that strat wouldn't get nerfed at some point. Well, I mean, to be fair, it's kind of always been that way in Hearts of Iron, um, except artillery was just always the master for de defensive. Like, uh, I did in Hearts of Iron 3, I did Romania, uh, and I managed to just absolutely just ground stop the uh, Soviet okay. at Bessarabia uh, with nothing but artillery, pretty much. It was 80% artillery, 20% infantry. Now, mind you, I couldn't move. I couldn't attack them. I would lose and just die horribly. But, okay. You know, they couldn't attack me. That was the entire point. For whatever reason, in Hearts of Iron 4, however, you can use artillery offensively and it still works. Yeah, it does. It works a little <laughs> bit too well. Yeah, that's the problem. It's mostly um, because of its ridiculous base stats. Yeah. Part of the problem is nothing has uh, anywhere near enough defense to keep up with it, so. And soft attack, you know, when you have 1,600 soft attack on a division, and, you know, you're, the enemy divisions have 300 to 600 defense at most. Yeah. They, they just get melted. Hmm. Well, this is exciting. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, hmm. Time to get started on artillery too. 
Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna get that for another hundred days. Two or one, because I just got started on the 1939 artillery. Yeah, I'm researching interwar right now, which okay. is right before the 1939 one, so. Okay. I'm a hundred days out. 97 now. All right. That said, I think I'll be okay. I think I'll be okay. I, I think I can manage to gather enough uh, production together really quick to feed my divisions. I think. Well, I hope you can. <laughs> yeah, so do I. So do I. I wouldn't want this game to end in 1939. Oh, don't worry. I mean, worst case scenario, I abandon the north and just hold uh, hold next to Amsterdam. Like, I, I can shrink my front down. Like, I can turn those four northern provinces into two. Right. So, if it comes to it, I, I do have a fallback plan, and I'll be fine. I just don't want to lose that portion of my country, because there's nice big factories in it. All right. All right. I got a whole extra three factory slots out of concentrated industry too. Perfect. Go you. Yeah, that should be good. All right. But yeah, it's not nice to have partial mobilization at least. Now things build so much faster. army experience do I need to actually flesh this out? So, is there any actual difference between regular troops and elite troops in terms of their combat ability? Because from the tall tip, it doesn't seem like it. Nope. They, they just get higher priority, right? Yep, that's just higher priority for equipment. Mm. So I only need 75. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I guess I could get up 80 to 95. All right. 75 what? 75 army experience base to fill out my division. All right. Every 10 I get above that lets me add in support stuff, which will be helpful. But it's not quite as necessary. Yeah, I got 53 right now. Yeah. And right. I mean, it's worth exercising, not just for the experience, but also get them to the regular status. That's a 25% bonus. It's true. It's kind of nice. Um, that said, it's also pretty much free right now if you plan to uh, get infantry equipment two before the war starts. Because you're only using infantry equipment one for the exercises. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, did you switch over to partial mobilization? Uh, no, not yet. I'm waiting to get more political power. But I switched yeah. to limited conscription a while back. Ah, I see. 
Yeah, just checking. Uh, I was at zero man powered, so I kind of really had to. Yeah, I was just checking because uh, okay, okay, partial mobilization is fifteen percent, not twenty five percent, right? I hope it is. Uh, let me check. Because <laughs> it just ticked down to twenty four percent. It's a ten percent construction speed bonus. No, I mean uh, the world tension requirement. Oh yeah, yeah, it's fifteen percent. Good, good. I, d I just saw the world tension tick down to 24%, and I was like, uh, you did switch it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it it's 15%. Good, good, good. Just checking. All right. I am tempted to go to free trade, though, but, because but that means I'd export a little more oil. But I did hire the plus 15% political power gain guy, because uh, there, are, there are things to use political power for. Yeah, I don't have one of those. The The only politician I've actually bothered to get is the uh, captain of industry mm. for the civilian factory build speed. Then I got like my military theorist for army experience gain and stuff like that. I'm in 1942 in my single player game and I still got things to spend political power for. Really? Yeah. I always run out by then. Okay. Who knows? Also, I only have one general, so I'll have to hire some more. Eventually. Mm. Eventually. I mean, for that, we'd actually have to have, you know, an army. <laughs> the one general I get actually kind of annoys me, because oh. he's a mountaineer and a hill fighter, but I got a province with a forest. What the heck? Well, uh, look at the bright side. Um... There isn't one. Okay, why the <laughs> hell is... There? Okay, there's literally no mount. No no, no hills even yeah. down here. So why the heck is he a hill fighter and a mountaineer in Belgium? What? I mean, aren't these countries called the low countries because they're giant, yeah, flat, Yeah, exactly. Low. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, especially the Netherlands. You're actually yeah. below the sea level for the most part. Yeah. You know, I would kind of be terrified about living below the sea level. Yeah, you know, you'd think that would bother a lot of people. <laughs> Surprisingly, it doesn't. Surprisingly, it doesn't. Oh, uh, well. All right. Do you also use support artillery in the support slot? Because that seems like a pretty good idea to me. Yep, it's good. I swear to God, I'm going to kill the maker of this interface. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's not that bad. No. I've no, seen no, games no. with Ward's interface. No, no, my mind's actually just bugging out on me right now. Yeah. Like, absolute wig bug out completely. Okay. Um, like, I'm trying to mouse over my naval dockyard to delete it, right? Yeah. So, instead of just uh, hovering over it to bring up the thing, it's actually just flashing like I'm constantly, like, moving my cursor on and off of it. Okay. And it's not actually registering that I'm hovering over it. That does seem pretty bad. Yeah, that's just like, uh-oh. So, so yeah, I'm ho having some trouble deleting my dockyards right now to make some space. Oh, dear. Did you get your extra research slot yet, by the way? Research? Yeah. Okay. Have you? Nope. Still working uh, on it. Yeah. I, I more or less just got it so I could always be researching a doctrine. Yeah. Uh, that said... Research the army effort. Now, come here, you little dockyard. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm clicking on. I actually managed to, like, move over it. Oh, there we go. Got it. Got okay. one dockyard. <laughs> this, this takes way longer than it should. Because <laughs> I, the only way I think I can do it, I figured out how, is that I have to, like, be super quick about it. 
uh, because it registers that I hover for like 0.2 seconds. Okay. Ah, oh, God. Come on, you bastard. No. No, I didn't want to build a new dockyard in Holland. Maybe you did, you just don't know about it. No, I, I can constantly say <laughs> that my, my program does not involve the construction of any more dockyards. In fact, it involves the deconstruction of two, if I could ever click this goddamn button. There, partial mobilization. Good stuff. That will speed construct. things up. Yeah. Yep, way faster now. Just over a month to build a military factory. Yeah. I can get one complete in... Let's see. Basically just under a month. I'll a just month. use my remaining slots for military factories, probably. Yeah. How many do you have anyway? I only got 11. I only have 11 as well. Okay. I'm building uh, two right now. And I'd like to be building more if I could press this goddamn X. Yeah, I can get 15 with all my slots right now. Aha! Alright, got the second dockyard. Yeah, it takes me that long to click on, on a dockyard for removal, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's not good. You know, it should be possible to unlock some of these slots by spending something, I don't know, just... There should be some kind of mechanic. Yeah, so some way to develop, you know, yeah, territory. Yeah, exactly. Upgrade it from being a shitty rural region to, you know... Which would help, especially the countries that have basically almost no slots to build in. Tr trust me, Marbazir's first idea is, hey, let's go play, like, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> And then I, I, I loaded up Saudi Arabia, and uh, I found that it had three factory slots. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know what? Let's not play Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah, let's not. But, but I, I can deal with having no manpower. I can deal with a lot of things. But I at least need, like, you know, a dozen factories. Yeah. Wait, Ming. Hmm. So China's beating up Japan. Seems like it. It's <laughs> usually other way around. Eh, it's 50 /50. Having said that, we play without historical AI focus. That might make this game go very differently compared to a single yeah. player with historical focus. Yeah. That, that said, even with historical focus on, I've still seen, like, China manage to lose. Mm. Or China manage to win. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget to build your forts, because it's already 1938. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. I already, I already got level 4, and you have 0 everywhere? That's fine. I'm not going to be needing to build forts for probably another 6 months. Okay, if you say so. Yeah, I, I'm on top of it, don't worry. Apparently, think. Still can't delete this damn dockyard, though. <laughs> I've, I've gotten rid of two of them. All right, gotten rid of two of them. I just want to get rid of that last one. It just refuses to cooperate. Yeah, no, it would prefer to just flash at me. Like, mouse over a factory. Does does it like uh, does it like show you the proper convert button and everything? Hey, hold on, I'm picking some research. If I go to a factory... Uh, yeah, like click on yeah, a province. Yeah, I see what you mean. And it's just flashing? Yeah, it's there it... for like a split second and then it goes away. Yeah. I don't that, remember having that problem in single player. Uh, I've never had this problem before. Yeah, it's weird. It has to be something to do with multiplayer. I, I would assume. You know what? Actually, I'm going to try something huh. here. Radical. I'm going to yeah. pause the game. It's working. <laughs> Yeah, it's working. Solution. Well, kind of working. Oh, you unpaused now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I unpaused. That's why. Yeah. All right. I, I found out how to delete a factory. I had to pause the game. Yeah, I guess it's something to do with how the game syncs in multiplayer. Sounds about right. All right. There we go. 
So finish those military factories and yeah, I mean, that, that'll be enough. Good. So what about support battalions? Is there anything you prioritize? Uh, I have always thought logistics companies are particularly important. Yeah, I use If you them get logistics some. company up to four, it, mm -hmm. it's worth minus 40% supplies. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, hilariously, if you stack that with the doctrines, you can get armies that use minus 60% supplies. <laughs> so they basically generate supply. Yeah, pretty S much. Seems you ever legit. wanted to use blitz? You ever wanted to use a blitzkrieg in Siberia? You can do that. <laughs> seems legit. You shouldn't be able to. That's not broken can. at all. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much my solution for getting through Russia. But do you get like recon too before the war, for example? Because recon is a pretty important stat. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't really get support battalion twos before the war generally, mostly because I don't have enough time. They're they're pretty high priority once I uh, yeah. get the rest of the stuff finished. Usually they'll come like in the months following the war, though. Primarily, I try and get everything else. Mm. But yeah, it especially depends. Like, what part of the reason I don't really get too much into the support battalions before the war? Yeah, is because then you have to then you have to supply them with support equipment. Right. And depending on your, you know, industrial and financial situations, that may not always be possible. Makes sense. Uh, they're, they're a luxury, as far as I'm concerned. But you know, it's not luxury. Yeah. Putting a cut in this episode. <laughs> true. True. So thanks for watching, everyone. This is a super exciting episode where a lot of things happened. Hey, you know what? We got partial <laughs> mobilization. Yep. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.